Welcome back to Restaurantopia. Dave Ross has a topic near and dear to all of our hearts. Where did all the labor go? He's speaking at the Eat Local Ohio Marketing Summit. Here it is. Imagine a perfect world where you can build a restaurant, open the doors, and make loads of money. Unfortunately, those days are over. It takes great leadership, hard work, and long hours to operate a successful restaurant. Together, we can make it happen. This is Restaurantopia. Well, we're going to talk about something you guys probably tried to escape your restaurants and not talk about this. We're we'll do a little bit of deep dive on labor. <laughs> <Yay>! So, uh, <laughs> uh, Abe wanted me to talk a little bit about you know where did all the workers go. So I feel like you guys are a self-selecting group because you're here. You want to learn. Obviously, you came here for some marketing, but in, in but some of the stuff that we've talked about today is going to help you in some of the stuff we're experiencing with labor. So I want to start off show of hands like who has who's currently experiencing some labor difficulties in their operations? A little bit, for sure. Having some, okay. Is it getting better, worse, or the same? A little better? Easier to find people, not the greatest people. Not the greatest quality, right, okay. <clears throat> How many of you were experiencing similar issues prior to March 15th, 2020? Which, everybody knows that date, right? That was a date that Governor DeWine came on and said, you can no longer have people in your restaurant. And for some of you guys that already did carry out, I think we were, we were talking, Charlie and I, earlier about, you know, they had a strong carryout presence, so it was a little bit easier for them to, to pivot, but some of you didn't, you know, and if it was less than 5 or 10% of your operation, you know, it, it became very difficult. I don't know if anybody's got to figure it out, and I'm not standing up here saying I've got to figure it out, but I, I, what I want to try to do is, you know, give you guys something in the next, you know, two to three hours. I want to give you guys in the next few minutes some, some things to think about, some inspiration, and some stuff that hopefully you can take away and either... Uh, Hopefully you're either, either way you walk out here mad at me. You're mad at me because uh, you've already got it down and I'm, you know, maybe reiterating some things you already know, or you're mad at me because I'm going to challenge you a little bit because there's some things we're going to need to change as an industry and as, as, as entrepreneurs in order to tackle this problem. So the first thing I want to talk about is the, there's, I believe there's four main reasons why we sit back and everybody's heard like, where did all the workers go? Where did they go? COVID happened, but people didn't just disappear from the workforce, okay? Yeah, they did. They, they did, okay. There's 7 million males from 18 to 45 that left, left the workforce. Okay, let me rephrase that. They didn't disappear as people. <laughs> Good catch. Good catch. Um, so there's four, four main things, and, I, and I, I can give you some, you know, some stuff on all this. I, I believe retirement, you know what I mean? So people retired early, okay? I can give you probably half a dozen people I know in this industry, brokers and different people that just you know, between 58 and 62 that just said, you know what, I'm throwing the towel in a little early. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe I'm not as invested or as vested as I, as I would have been, but, you know, listen, this industry's hard and the times are even getting harder and, I, and I'm older and I have less patience and, you know, less energy and everything and I'm just throwing the towel in early. So I believe early retirement was a portion of that. I think if you look at college age workers, um, which is a lot of, you know, a, a lot of our workforce, those, uh, those people are staying at home and they're on uh, mom and dad's payroll, um, and they're not going back out on the workforce. So I think some people, some people did that, you know, and that eliminated a significant part of the talent that we've got in this industry. Um, I believe there's also a portion that are stay at home because they used to work prior, prior to the pandemic. They worked not because they needed to work, because they wanted to just get out, and they didn't really need the money. They just wanted something to do. Now they've decided, okay, I'm actually going to stay at home and spend more time with the family and take care of the kids or do whatever that is, and they're not out there because they didn't financially need it. They did it for other reasons. And then I think probably one of the other big hitters for us is the gig economy. You know what I mean? You've got, you know, Albert talked about third party delivery, you know, to be able to, you know, work for Uber or DoorDash or whatever and, and turn your job on and off from your phone and work when you want to work. You know, I think that took a big chunk out of there. So the reason I bring this up first is because if you haven't spent time thinking about what, what the reasons are that we're in the situations we are, you'll never figure out the solutions for yourself. You know, and everybody, Nicole, we were talking about a little bit ago, like everybody's problem's a little different. You know, everybody's marketing problem's a little different. Everybody's, uh, everybody's labor problem is a little different, okay? And I think one thing that I'd like you guys to take away from this, probably one of the most important things is, let's not, as an industry, let's not apologize for the job we have to offer, okay? I think sometimes we can get in, into like a negative mind frame and, and say like, well, you know, we, I can't get people, I can't do this, I can't do that, or somebody comes in and you're keeping people that maybe you shouldn't keep, like never apologize for what you have to offer. Now you gotta treat your people good, you gotta pay them right, you gotta have the right culture, all those things that you know, you're, you're thinking I'm probably gonna talk about. But we, we've gotta think differently. I didn't realize before I Googled these, like who to credit them to, but uh, you know, Albert Einstein, 
he's become very popular with Verizon. But uh, you know, he, he, was, he actually did some things before the commercials. He says, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and then five minutes on the solution. Okay, so think about that. This is one of the most brilliant people that has graced our planet. If he had an hour to, th to, to work on a problem, 55 minutes he'd be thinking about the problem. So have we spent that amount of time thinking about this labor shortage, thinking about the issues in your restaurant, and figuring out what are the different things that we need to do to, you know, to solve the problem? You know, and then the second quote is it says, you cannot solve a problem with the same mindset that it was created. Again, the things you did pre-pandemic, you're not gonna be able to do now to solve the problem, okay? And just to give you some ideas on that, look at the things that have changed. You know, when you look at Uber, like 10 years ago, would you ever think you're gonna get in a stranger's car Okay, and and probably not put your seatbelt on in the back seat. Who puts their seatbelt on in an Uber? Oh, I'm free. I, I don't. I don't know why. I get in and I'm like, oh, I feel so comfortable with this random person that's driving me around. Um, he only seems a little hot. Yeah, right? yeah. He's only yeah. He's, as long as he's as long as he's more sober than I am, we're good. Like yeah. Think about smartphones. You know, you think you would touch a glass and have a like a supercomputer in your pocket? Okay. You just talk, I mean, chat GPT. I mean, if you, that, that's huge. So there's all these things that, as we sit in our current state, that are going to be advanced that we need to do. Everybody, you guys are all restaurateurs. Some of you are operators. Some of you guys are employees. I, if everybody could just close your eyes for a second. Just do me a favor. Just close your eyes. Take a deep breath, okay? I'm going to describe, okay, a futuristic situation of a restaurant and what it's offering its employees, okay? And I want you to imagine you have to compete against this operation, okay? Excellent pay and cash bonuses. Medical, dental, and vision benefits for your, you and your family. Paid vacation and sick leave. 401k with employer matching. This is a restaurant. Career path to 100k potential income within three years. Flexible schedule. Debt-free college degrees. Okay. So open your eyes. Okay. Can you, can you guys imagine competing against that in the future? And, and Albert, you got it, it's Chipotle. There's some things happening out there that us as local restaurant operators are not tapping into. And there's things that are happening right now. This is a current Chipotle ad, okay? This is, this is what we're competing against. They're doing these things, so how do we get more creative? Okay. I think technology has got a huge place in this. Um, some of you guys may be adopting these things, some may not, but I think technology is huge, whether you're able to order with a QR code, why people went back to paper menus, I still don't understand, and don't be mad at me if you did that, but I don't get it. I thought we had a perfect opportunity as an industry to, to stay in that format where we can change pricing quickly, we can add pictures, we can add videos, we can have a, a component of social media you know, in our restaurants. But I think technology is huge. Um, I was at an airport, I was in Newark, coming back from vacation with my wife. And has anybody been to Newark Airport recently? They don't really have like the traditional like restaurants that airports have. It's like you're sitting down in the middle of the walkways in tables and they have tablets like bolted to these tables and you go up and you order and then next thing you know, 10, 15 minutes, somebody you know, comes by and drops the food. You pay right there, okay? So I sat down and I'm like, wow, this is cool. You know, My wife's going, this sucks, I hate this. Oh my God, this is so stupid. I can't believe, it. where's the server? Oh, you know, and I'm like, what was different? <laughs> you know, like it would have taken the same amount of time Okay, I said there's literally thousands of people here like dining. They can't staff this airport with people to, to take these orders and do this stuff and do it the way we traditionally do it. So they figured out a solution to say, hey, here's the menu, here's the pictures, here's the price. You swipe your, your, your card and it's all done. Somebody brings their food out to you. If we trap ourselves in the mentality of like, this is how it's always gotta work, you know, it's, it's gonna be tough. You know, also technology, like the more technology you have, the better off you're gonna, you're better you're gonna be able to attract that younger uh, employee, okay? Because if you've got the software to, what's the scheduling? Maybe it's seven shifts, but there's a couple other ones where you, they can actually, you can, you can post the schedule, they can look, they can swap with different people, they can you know, give them the flexibility of, yeah, so, so, so those types of things, like if you don't have those things, like that's what's gonna make it attractive for, for younger you know, employees to your restaurants, okay? And then we talk a lot about social media today, guys. If you're behind on social media and, you're, and it looks sta you know, stale and old and your website and all those different things, you know, people wanna work at places that they're proud to work at. You know what I mean? They, they wanna work at places that they're proud to go as, a, as an end user. Um, if any of you guys are familiar in Cleveland, you know, there's, a, there's a great concept that's been around you know, close to almost you know, 10 years now, it's Town Hall, okay? 
they have no problem getting employees. Okay? The place is cool, the website's cool, the ordering's cool, like everything is cool and sexy about this place. So they have no problem. They, they can pick and choose the employees they want because they have, what are we doing creative on benefits? Okay? You know, do you have medical, dental, vision, or some sort of benefits for your employees? Are they able to tap into those things? I, I love the college savings plan thing. You know I mean, can you figure out that you know, you know, the, those younger employees coming in, 18, you know, 19, you know, or even younger, you know, depending on your concepts, can they come in and can you take a portion of their, of their salary and actually save it for them? You know, those are just some unique things. Employee support, you know, do you offer financial planning for your employees? You know, I've got another customer of mine that, that literally, and this is bold, but literally when they're hiring people to work in their restaurant, they are pitching that they can help them become future millionaires if they stick with that corporation. Okay? Now, that sounds very bold, but when you go through his presentation, he actually talks about, you know, you're going in and you, and you start at this income, you're able to do the savings, you know, we, we teach you investing, we teach you budgeting, we teach you this, you know, you work up in the organization over the years, you make this much, this, you know, different positions, and he actually has a map and planned out where that person can eventually be a millionaire. So, you know, so what type of career pathing are you offering those employees? Because I'm telling you, the, the, gen, the Gen Z generation, they want to know what the future looks like, right on the border of Gen X and Millennial. Well, I think what they call it, uh, an ex axial or something. I don't know what, but, but uh, boomer. Boomer? no, I'm not a boomer. No, <laughs> what I'm saying is like, you know, the, the way I worked and was taught from my father is, you, you know, you go in, you put in the hours, you do the work, you put your head down, you grind and you'll find success. Okay. Yeah, that's not working with this new generation of employee. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta give them the path and tell them you're gonna start here, you're gonna do this, and then you're gonna have an opportunity here. And, and what are those things that they can do? Some some other creative stuff, uh, you know, in wellness. Like, you know, I, I've seen operators uh, actually have gym memberships for their uh, for their employees. You know, so is there a local gym that you can go in and get a discounted rate for a large group and and actually spend that, and then they've got the ability to have a gym membership. Uh, mental health assessments. Okay, yeah, health coach. You know, can you find somebody that's a local health coach and give that ability to do either a, you know, a share or, or you take care of it all together just to, to, to help, uh, you know, in the wellness of your employees? You know, what's the, up more, what's the upward mobility in your restaurant? Okay. You know, do you have mentorship programs? Okay. Uh, you can have additional incentives for the mentors or the, the longstanding employees to be able to help out some of the, you know, the mentees. Okay. Do you have that? And again, I, I had employee ownership or profit sharing, another one that Brian, you know, talked very well about, you know, so... Um, does your main leadership actually have a stake in the game, you know, at, at your restaurant? So, so that's just some things I wanted to make it quick, but just I feel like, again, you're not going to get out of the problem the way you went into it if you have the same mentality. So some of these things, hopefully some of it, you know, gave you some ideas. Um, if there's anybody who wants to chat afterwards. Yeah. Well, and it's also a self-selecting group. You guys are here to be better. You know what I mean? So it's, you know, the, the people that are probably struggling aren't here. They haven't, right. they, they're not, they're the ones that when you talk about, hey, come to a marketing summit, they're like, Pfft. Yeah, no, I appreciate the time. I, I, I listed a couple ep Restaurantopia episodes that go into some labor stuff. If you guys want to jot these down, we, we literally just dropped an episode last week. Anthony did a great job on, on episode 144, how to effectively onboard a new manager. Some great stuff there. Uh, episode 135, don't hire for skills, hire for personality instead. That's another good one that talks about you know, how you can train skills, you can't train personality. You know, so if you're hiring for personality, you can give the person the skills. If you're looking for skills, you can't make that person's personality different. Okay? And then episode 117, reducing restaurant turnover and best practices. So a couple things there. Hopefully those resources help. And uh, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Hey, this is a high-quality pod. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody. Cut. Take care. Cut. Adios. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to Restaurantopia. The gratitude that we have for each and every one of you spending your precious time to listen to this podcast is immeasurable. Please make sure to tell a friend about this podcast. And also, if you have any feedback for us, visit us on restaurantopia.com and drop us a line. You can also subscribe on your favorite place to listen to podcasts. Thank you and have a great day. We also want to thank our sponsor, Hillcrest Food Service. If you are a local independent restaurant and are looking for a distributor who has chef and operational consulting, provides marketing support, does menu reviews, and most importantly, wants you to be successful, reach out to Hillcrest Food Service at hillcrestfoods.com.